Hi, I'm Bob Gimlin. Skeptics love to point out that there is no physical evidence to support the Bigfoot phenomena. They are wrong. The Skookum cast is compelling evidence of Bigfoot. The BFRO conducted an expedition in the year 2000 in an area called Skookum Meadow in the Cascade Mountains of Washington State. The 10-man expedition used the call blasting of A. Powell's, the crying of infants, and children playing. The BFRO recorded something responding from far away, and one response from quite close. They also used pheromone chips and bait stations. At one of the bait stations where they had laid out apples in a well-trafficked mud wallow, they found a body impression. Dr. Leroy Fish, a wildlife ecologist, used over 200 pounds of plaster to cast the imprint, which ended up looking like this. The first thing that may pop into someone's head is that this is less than definite. Notably, there are no big feet. Well, there are no hooves either. And let's examine why Bigfoot don't walk directly into mud. In Dr. Donald R. Griffin's book entitled Animal Minds, published by the University of Chicago Press, Griffin discusses how animals are more conscious than people like to think. He notes that grizzly bears have an impressive ability to remain concealed while watching humans. They will conceal themselves strategically, and sometimes disturbingly close, without giving away their location. The book also notes that it is easy to argue the fact that grizzly bears at times will conceal their tracks by walking in water and stepping on logs or stones wherever possible. Grizzlies will even walk through thick brush, by no means the path of least resistance, but because the brush conceals their prints. And can you blame them? The fact that so few grizzly bodies ever turn up intensifies the assertion that bears have an awareness of their own presence and a determination to conceal it. And this is just a bear, which is a common creature. Imagine a very uncommon creature. If a bear can learn to view hunters from close range, remain largely undetected, and not leave tracks while doing so, then I would argue that a higher primate is able to perfect the art. Chimpanzees are well aware of the tracks they leave. Dr. Sue Savage-Rumbaugh, a primatologist from Georgia State University, recorded chimps leaving trails through thick brush so that other chimps that are lagging behind can follow the group. The chimps will stop this trail-making behavior if they enter mud or any substrate without leaf litter. This indicates that chimps are aware that they leave footprints, and more importantly, are aware that other chimps can easily recognize and follow them. So let's extrapolate that to Bigfoot. If chimps recognize their footprints as evidence of chimp passage, then Sasquatch can probably recognize their prints as evidence of Sasquatch passage. Chimps use footprints to convey their presence to each other, so it is probable that Bigfoot is aware that their footprints convey their presence to others. We are talking about a creature that has spent a very long time getting very good staying away from people a creature with a much larger brain than a chimpanzee, and probably bigger than a human's brain. However, there were apples there, and it is likely that Bigfoot came a long way to get to the cast site, and it didn't want to leave empty-handed if it knew it could get away with it. All primates are opportunists. He or she was fully aware that an amorphous blob in the mud doesn't bear further scrutiny, but the Bigfoot, for once, was dealing with people who don't dismiss them outright. Skeptics say it's obviously from an elk. It isn't from an elk. I have found testimony of many doctors who have studied the impression. Dr. Esteban Sarmiento, a primatologist, and Dr. Dara Swindler, a professor of anatomy and author of Atlas Prime Gross Anatomy, both agree upon the evident, apparent, and well-defined Achilles tendon. Clearly not the knee of an elk. Dr. Jeff Meldrum put the skookum cast maker as having a 40-50% to 50 larger body than a human, and notes various anatomical features that are consistent with a higher primate and a biped. Hair was collected off the cast. This hair was examined by Dr. Henner Fehrenbach. He compellingly identifies the hair as primate or very human-like, though this is an instance where human contamination is probable within the 200 pounds of plaster, so Bigfoot hair it may be, but it isn't conclusive. Perhaps the most scientifically important examination was conducted by Dr. George Schaller. Dr. Schaller is the Director of Science for New York's Wildlife Conservation Society. He studied ungulates, or deer. He examined the skookum cast. Now he studies apes. He confirmed that this was no elk, and as a note, just how an elk could make this impression with no hoof prints is completely beyond me. The analysis that I find the most telling is the dermatological analysis conducted by Officer James Chilcutt. Chilcutt is a fingerprint analyst with the Texas Conroe Police Department. He found dermal flow, which is unique to primates. The patterns he found on the skookum casts are consistent with the prints casted in the 1980s from Walla Walla, Washington. A unique ridge pattern on different casts, taken years and hundreds of miles apart, is truly remarkable. If that's a hoax, then we are talking about a complex and well-orchestrated fabrication that seems much less likely than Bigfoot, 
simply being real. Chilcutt was also impressed by micro-scarring and healing on the skin. This is not really feasible to hoax, and not found in anything other than primates, yet no human made the Skookum cast. You could call the credibility of all involved into question, but remember, never discredit someone for finding something that they are looking for. That's bad science and even worse logic. Of course they have Bigfoot on the brain, they're looking for Bigfoots where Bigfoots are. It has been said that if you go out looking for a Bigfoot, you might find it even if it isn't there. Or maybe, if you go out looking for a Bigfoot, you have a better chance of finding indication of their presence than anyone else would, because in fact you are looking for it. You could blame the BFRO members for not setting up cameras at the location. But I think I actually have to agree with the BFRO on this one. They obviously didn't have infinite surveillance at their disposal. So where they couldn't put cameras, they put some kind of detection system. A much more cost-effective one. Apples in some mud. Very practical. You could say it was a hoax. A film crew with the Discovery Channel Australia was documenting the expedition for a show called Animal X. Maybe one of the crew members wanted to make better TV. The problem with that is the fact that some very smart people have examined the impression, both pre- and post-casting. And no one really argues that the track was in fact made by an animal. There is natural hair pattern, there is obvious motion present, ruling out some kind of large stamp or Bigfoot-shaped thing that someone forced into the soil. All examinations of the cast point to it being from an animal. The disagreement is about which animal. Personally, I agree with the qualified scientists who actually took the time to examine the evidence and its implications. Many of these scientists wrote open invitations for their peers to examine the cast themselves. This opportunity has been largely ignored by the scientific community. But it shouldn't be. We have experts at the field of primate anatomy saying that this is a primate. We have distinct fingerprints that precisely correlate with casts from different locations. Consistent dermal patterns analyzed by a man whose testimony routinely is used in court. I happen to believe the experts. What about you? And please, I refuse to make my videos over-sensationalized, give my videos misleading titles, or use any sources that I find less than reputable. If you like that precedent, please like and subscribe. And as always, thanks a lot for listening.